Hey, what's going on guys? So, uh, who remembers these two knives? I right, showed these in a previous video, and I wasn't quite sure on the, uh, you know, little tank stamps on these guys. Alright, because obviously these are old, and you know, there's some uh, tarnishing on the blade and stuff like that, so it is definitely harder to, to see what's going on with these markings. However, thank you to the, uh, the library of books that I have. I was able to fairly easily look these guys up. So let's go ahead and see what I found. So first off, this is Bernard Levine's Guide to Knives and Their Values. Um, this is just a fantastic book. There's multiple editions of this. This one happens to be the fourth edition. I think I have the first, the fourth, maybe the fifth. I forget. There's a third one that I have. Um, but they're all awesome. And these are actually going up in value as time goes on. Just because a lot of the uh, the older guys and gals remember these things from back in the day. So there is Bernard Levine. All right. Once upon a time, you're able to talk to him on knife forums. Um, you know, anything old knife related. And man, he was the guy. He was the guru. He knew it all. But anyway, so I have these uh, pages dog eared here. Now this book, I've talked about this book in, in multiple videos too, but... It has so much awesome general information, but it has tons and tons of very specific information about specific companies and, you know, markings and, and different models. And, and it is a price guide, although, you know, it's very outdated. I certainly wouldn't go by the prices in here. However, it could be, you know, literally a guide. All right. So if it's, it says your knife's worth $55 in here, doesn't mean it is. It could be worth $30. could be worth $500. It just depends. But anyway, I uh, dog-eared these pages here just to show you this real quick. All right, so first one up here, page 51 of this uh, fourth edition. All right, I have this uh, marked here, Empire Knife Company. All right, so let me see real quick which one is which. And that is not this one. I believe it's this darker one here. And yes, it is. So if you look at the tank stamp, what I was able to do was I was able to just kind of get a rough idea of what it says. Obviously, I see an E, an M, possibly an F or P. So obviously, being alphabetical, I went to the E section and I was able to quickly figure out what this was. So this particular knife was made by Empire Knife Company, okay, in West Winstead, post-1880. All right, Winstead, Connecticut, USA. All right, so these knives were made between 1856 and 1930. So, I mean, that's awesome. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. What I'll do is I'll use these books as a, a quick reference and then obviously I can do more homework if I want to know like a specific model or perhaps what it originally sold for, things like that. But uh, but yeah, I just thought that was really cool. All right, so this one is from Empire. All right. Now as far as this one, this one's going right in the collection as is. However, this other one, I'm going to reprofile, perhaps on another video. All right, but I'm going to take uh, some of that spine down and reprofile this into maybe like, I don't know, I was thinking maybe a Warncliffe blade? I mean, we'll see. But anyway, so the markings on here, let's go ahead and zoom in. All right, I'm looking at this, I'm like, you know, first, it looks like there's like a LL maybe in there. It's really difficult to see, especially with the, uh, the tarnishing and stuff. But uh, after taking a, a loop, I was able to get the first couple letters here. And so let's flip over to the other page here. Turns out this one is Hollingsworth Knife Company, all right? So let's look at that again, knowing what it is, Hollingsworth Knife Company. You might be able to make that out a little bit more, all right? Definitely the O-R-T-H on the ends and the, the L-L-I-N towards the beginning here. So yeah, I mean, this was a, a great help, obviously, in figuring out what this is fairly quickly. So Hollingsworth Knife Company, formerly known as Cane Cutlery, all right, from Cane PA, obviously made in USA. All right, and that was manufactured between 1916 and 1930. All right, is when these were made under the Hollingsworth Knife Company name. Now, if we go to Kane, let's go ahead and look that up real quick. So I didn't mark this page, but looking over at Kane Cutlery, all right, you can see there's two spots for it. One says uh, became Hollingsworth, which we know from Kane PA. All right, the other one says it was for Parker KCS, all right, in Chattanooga, Tennessee, Parker Knives. All right, USA and Japan from 1933 until present. All right, so pretty interesting, just the history. And obviously, like any other industry, the knife industry, you know, you see a lot of uh, 
names and brands uh, change hands. One company buys another company and so forth. And a lot of times they will keep the name, sometimes they won't. In this particular case, they change it to a whole different name. So yeah, I just wanted to uh, make a quick video saying that these guides are awesome. Um, what's interesting about this is that like if I go onto Google and I type in like old knife marks and some of these letters, it's not gonna get me anywhere. I mean, perhaps you get lucky with a search, but when I talk about especially old slip joints and stuff, if you're into collecting these and knowing about them a little bit, if you, you know hop on eBay, there's just so many of them out there that some of them sell for like a dollar or two dollars and they're just really just full of, of history and they're really good quality knives. You know, Just because a knife is old doesn't mean that it doesn't work anymore or that it's not a, a superior knife. Um, a lot of these knives, I mean, obviously things were made to last back then, right? Uh, they didn't have the same technology. You're not gonna find some kind of crazy super steel on these knives, but they work. And like I said, it's just a huge piece of history. It's just really, really interesting. So if you are into you know classic knives, you have to get books like this, like Bernard Levine's uh, book. I mean, there, there's tons of them. I have a whole library of stuff, but this is why. This is why I have these. I mean, sometimes I'll catch some crap from the wife for having all these books everywhere. She's like, well, you don't really read them. You know, maybe you can get rid of them, maybe you could sell them. I'm like, well, they're reference books. I mean, it's not like, you know, some kind of storybook I'm gonna pull off the, the shelf and just read the story. I use them as reference. I have old magazines, old, um, you know, catalogs, old books, and I do find myself referencing all the time. In this particular case, this whole thing, to figure out what two brands these are, just based on their half legible, uh, you know, tank stamps, it, it took me all of like maybe 10 minutes. But if I tried to search online like this, it would have taken me a lot longer. Anyway, I wanted to do a quick update because I had two different people just ask about these knives if I ever figured out what they were, and I did, but the bigger picture here is having physical books, physical media as references is always really, really helpful. It's not just for when the internet goes down or if there's some kind of apocalypse, because trust me, if there's some kind of crazy uh, end of the world, no one's gonna be looking up what knife this is, you know what I mean? So this reference material is a little bit different than perhaps like a survival guide or a book on how to grow certain plants or wild edibles or how to butcher animals, things like that. Those, that reference material I still have as well because again, when the internet's down and you need to know something, what do you have to do? You have to go to the books unless you just happen to stumble across someone who has that knowledge. Um, but we're all very guilty of just, you know, just hopping on Google, asking a question, asking, you know, Siri or Alexa or, hey Bill, grab my phone, you know, whoever you're asking, <laughs> to uh, to help you find an answer to a question real quick. But sometimes there's just no information. There's been many knife related things where people will send me messages like, listen, I spent hours trying to figure this out. And they came to me and, and I'd say maybe, I don't know, 50-50. Half the time I, I know what they have and they're so grateful. Like, oh my God, I, I'm so glad I asked you. And you saved me so much time because I really can't figure it out. And the other half the time I really don't know either. I don't know everything. <laughs> but I try to be as helpful as I can when I can. Uh, but the point here is having this reference material is what really, really helps. These books and, and old catalogs and magazines and stuff has so much information that you cannot Google, you know, so pretty cool. But anyway, that's all. Like I said, stay tuned. I'll probably, I'll definitely reprofile this. I'll show what it looks like. I just don't know if I'm going to show the process. I'm literally going to grind. I'm going to start here. I'm going to go real slow and come in heavy here. And I'm basically going to take all this metal off, all right, to change the shape of this blade. I'll grind a flat line just to straighten this edge out. Then, of course, I'll sharpen both sides. Uh, as far as the other blade here, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I'll just end up sharpening it. Actually, it's pretty darn sharp. I might just strop that up. Uh, and then we're back to uh, a perfectly usable knife, and this will go in my pocket. Now, because this uh, blade tip was broken off, you can see this is exposed like this. Uh, but once I, I reprofile this and grind this down, uh, the tip should be inside the handle, so it'll be completely safe to, uh, to actually keep in the pocket loose. And maybe I'll put this in a slip or something, but it's just really old, wonderful knife that's going to uh, get a little bit of TLC. And uh, it's going to go back in the pocket and get some use again. And this one, like I said, is going to go right into the collection. I would fix this one up a little bit, sharpen all that stuff, but because of the scale missing, I'm just afraid that with more usage, this is just going to deteriorate more. Uh, but still a wonderful piece of history and an awesome addition to the uh, collection. So that's it for this one, guys. Let me know down in the comment section. Do you have a library of books pertaining to your hobbies? You guys know that I have a ton of hobbies. So yes, inherently I have a ton of books. Everything from knife-related material. I, I probably have at least a hundred different knife-related books. I have over a dozen different Zippo-related books, uh, you know, random lighter type books, firework books, you know, making fireworks and and 
you know, referencing what they are. I mean, I have literally firework guides, so you can see all the old firework labels and it'll tell you what they do and things like that. This is way, again, before the internet, <laughs> when you're at the firework stand and you're like, well, I wanna get that, what does it do? It doesn't say what it does. My book helped and I'd be able to look at that book, you know, there was a, it was a small little pocket book, I'd be able to whip it out and say, okay, that particular thing is, you know, um, you know, a fountain and it lasts 42 seconds, whatever the thing is. But that was really cool. Now, of course, you know, beep, boop, boop, you could just ask real quick or take a picture of it and you will find it online or whatever technology we have now, which is pretty awesome. Uh, but books, they'll always be there. They're just awesome. So just let me know if you guys have a library of books pertaining to your uh, hobbies and collections. And obviously, lately, I've been so into the coin collecting and stuff like that. And those books are, are extremely important because they give you so much information that is it's honestly sometimes easier to just flip open a book and get to a section and get the answer you're looking for on a question than even googling it so anyway that's all hope you guys have an awesome day thank you so much for watching and i'll see you tomorrow with a brand new video take care